was foresight and vision that led to the opening of these doors. The vision of Edgar O'Dell Lovett, Rice's first president, who recognized the value the Institute could be to Houston if it invited and welcomed its citizens to campus. The vision of the university, which is part of our city's prosperity and success. Supporting us in this high endeavor has put Rice in the forefront of continuing education nationally. And I know a lot of my colleagues around the country are a little bit envious about our new building. The vision of Susie and Mel Glasscock, whose support of continuing studies at Rice has ensured our future in the 21st century. We would not be gathered here today without you two. The vision of the Anderson and Clark families, who have served Rice so ably and loyally over the years. We are honored to have your names on our building. And if there's one point at which we know that William Marsh Rice's vision and Edgar O'Dell Lovett's vision intersected, it was around this idea that this institute, which became this university, would be something great for the city of Houston. So this is truly an extraordinary day for us, as a little over 100 years later, we put a permanent building on our campus dedicated to the School of Continuing Studies. This is a great day for Rice and for the Houston community more broadly. Um, this project is uh, the direct result of really several things. It's original vision of our founding president, Edgar O'Dell Lovett, that we be connected to the community. It's the commitment of Houstonians to be involved with Rice. It's the commitment of the Glasscocks to help establish the, the School of Continuing Studies. And then most recently, obviously, is the coming together of two great families, the, the Clarks and the Andersons, to, uh, to make this beautiful building possible. Good to see you. You know, I haven't cried all day, but I love you too. I want to thank Mary McIntyre for her leadership as Dean of the School of Continuing Studies. She's just been fabulous and fabulous to work with. Today is a fulfillment of her dream for a building for the school. The D. Kent and Linda C. Anderson and Robert L. and Jean T. Clark building is the completion of a circle that began over 50 years ago when Kent and Bob and I were undergraduates together at Rice. Mel, Linda, and Puddin joined the circle in the 60s, and our lives have intertwined in so many ways through the years that their generosity should become the naming decision for this building completes the circle and begins a new one. It's the Andersons and the Clarks who should be thanking Rice for all the things that have meant so much in the lives of our two families. Most importantly, it brought our two families together in the first place. If it hadn't been for Rice and Hanson College, uh, I would have never met Kent. And despite the fact that he poured water on me and, and subjected me to all sorts of other indignities when he was a sophomore and I was only a freshman, it was the beginning of a lifelong uh, friendship and a business partnership that has continued today. As I was preparing these remarks, I was re reflecting on all of the key values that my parents worked tirelessly on instilling into my sisters and me, such as the value of education and hard work and fellowship and philanthropy. And this is what made this building and this project so meaningful to the Anderson family. It's a gift of education and to lifelong education of that. Buildings are important, but what happens in buildings is more important. And I really think the legacy of this building will be all the people and the families and the generations that benefit from what happens here. Well, the Glasgow School, when I first came to it, must have been, oh, 36, 37 years ago. And it was, uh, you very much had to use your uh, imagination so that you could find good places to teach. It's been a dream in progress. That's what it really has been. And it took that initial dream and vision to make it grow to this stage. 